Okay, there we go. Okay, my name is Chaos, and I'm running Unlimited Saga. We've had a good, uh... <laughs> yeah, I had the wrong mic setup for some reason. But we're good now. So, without much further ado, we'll get started with this, as... Well, we'll see if we meet Estimate. We're gonna meet Estimate, because I made some ridiculous promises if we don't. So I'm gonna give a countdown in chat while also doing the countdown IRL. So we'll start from 5. So... This is gonna be hard to do. Uh, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1... And we're going. This is Laura's route. It's one of seven you can choose. You might have seen Judy's yesterday. And if you did see, you... Maybe this will be able to tell what you're in for. It Hopefully it won't. Well, there's some things that can't happen this run that did happen there. Specifically the running out of uses on the axe. Pablo we don't have to worry about that specific thing, but... But it was a funeral without a body. There are other things that can go wrong. But you're not going to see them, because this run is going to be perfect. Only his glasses were left behind. But if you didn't see yesterday's run, um, it went well, everything went fine. <laughs> you can see the highlight on YouTube. So Laura's story starts with Laura at the funeral for uh, her dead husband, who was lost at sea. And they don't really know what happened to him. And we never learn what happened to him. Spoilers. Even though this lore is, or this story is lore, is technically the... My capture device cut off. But it's fine, everything's fine. <laughs> I thought the console stopped. Where was I? Oh yeah. The actual story revolves around Henri, who's that uh, robe figure next to Laura there. And he's gonna get a haircut, don't worry. Kinda got a really dumb haircut going on right now. And well, bam! That looks good. Also, he gets a new outfit. It looks really designer for her to have it in her closet, but maybe it was dead husband's outfit. So the first thing we're going to do is do some shopping. We're going to unequip everything that we don't need, because it just makes them way more than they ought to. And the shopping list is always the same at the start, as long as you do a hard reset. So you can always count on getting these specific items when you start the game. From here on out, all the item lists will be completely randomized. They're somewhat affected by what town you are in, and also the current market rank. The market rank increases as you buy stuff, and we're going to buy a bunch of stuff, so... Uh, the market rank will increase as we go through the run, and we'll get better stuff as we go through it, hopefully. The first thing we're going to do is move Henry to the front. I'm just going to call him Henry, even though he's Henry. That's because we're always going to be using him at the start of battle, and the cursor always defaults to the, pers or the first person in your party. So even once uh, we get more characters, Henry will always be going first. So... If you've never seen Unlimited Saga before, this is what the game is. It's a board game. Step and we're back, little man. fighting our first I'll encounter here. Join. Most of the encounters will more or less go like this, where Henri will use a dagger to start with. And then, for now, it will be Laura that's uh, attacking after Henri, but later on it will be someone named Francis. And Laura is basically only there to be a second body to attack. If you don't use an attack during a round, you don't show up on the battlefield, so you can't be targeted. So the reason why we're using two attacks there, even though one reason why one actually attacking is to have more than one target. As you're moving on the board, each uh, turn passes each time you take an action or a move. And monsters will move randomly throughout the board, as far as I know. And depending on their type, they'll take certain amount of turns before they'll move again. Undead, for instance, will move every four turns. And a turn again is when you take an action outside of battle. Or move by single space. 
We won't be using that mechanic much or at all. You can manipulate movement a bit later on if you want to try to avoid fighting on decks. But it's mostly futile. You'll probably fight them unless you're really good at knowing where they're going to end up moving. So this is the first technically boss encounter. Forced encounter, let's call it. There's a bunch of little dinky creatures as well as a pursuer. The dinky creatures have 1 LP, which is basically their real life points, as opposed to HP, which is more like their armor. And if you do more damage than the kit or animals or monsters uh, max HP, you'll pretty much always do LP damage. And they only have 60 HP, and the dagger that uh, Henri is using does more. So we're always going to kill them. So we just target one each for the four turns that Henri goes to kill them all in the first turn. Then we use Fire Arrow, mostly just to have someone on the field other than Henri, but also to do some extra damage. Fire Arrows is good at doing HP damage, but not so much LP damage. And whereas Daggers are better at doing LP damage versus HP. So Pursuers have 2 LP, so this should kill, or not at all. <laughs> I was really confident in that. Coming. And LP damage is somewhat random, so can't always count on it. So this is the first quest we're on. It's Road to Vaftum, part one. There's four parts to it, and it mostly involves you going down a road and maybe fighting a forced encounter. You notice I'm using Aura, it's an ability that Laura has off the start of the game, which is pretty nice. It reduces the chance of getting enemy encounters. It reduces the aggro rate of enemies, so if an aggro rate is above 100% it won't do much. But if the aggro rate is something like 70%, it'll reduce it to 50%. So there will only be a half a chance to actually get an encounter when you run into a monster. Insects like the one we fought have a base counter or aggro rate of 90%. So with Aura they have a same or 70% rate of uh, aggroing, so still pretty likely. Yeah, this is a lot of the game, just kind of moving through a map using Aura when you get to a new screen because you have to reset it. Ooh, nice, we didn't get the insect encounter. Birds have a 50% aggro rate base, so they're reduced to 30%. Vegeplasts, I believe, are 10%, so they will never attack you. Unless they're accompanied by another monster that does attack you. So there will be plenty of time to explain panels, but uh, just know for now that this... Ooh, that's really good. So we got Obstacle Crossing. That will be really handy later on. Uh, we can get to that when we get Uh, so the panels that we just placed are what determine your stats. There's no actual levels in this game. Marcusite. Marcusite? Marcusite. <laughs> We're about to do some forging, and Marcusite's an important thing. And this shop is random, so you kinda gotta roll with the punches. We're getting pretty good items here, though. Don't have to give up hope just yet. We're gonna save, uh, just cause forging is also random. We wanna get a very specific ability off the bat here. It'll make everything go way faster. And forging will be active throughout the run, so we'll have some time to explain it. But for now, we just need to forge a bow that has random arrow shot, which is exactly what we got. So that's good. That's the first random thing that can really reduce uh, your time, is whether or not you get random arrow shot quickly. We're going to throw that on Henri here, obviously. He's going to be using that bow a lot here. And you'll see how powerful that is a bit later on once we get to the Force Encounter. And hopefully not before that. Keep matching through. You want to actually combo with uh, the attack because it has a greater chance of doing LP damage by mashing too hard and just selecting attack. And the way combos work in this game is that you press circle instead of X when you're selecting an attack. That will 
cause you to hold the attack and either the enemy will interrupt your combo, which will still count as a combo, but they'll be a part of it, or you will be able to select another ability which you can then either use or hold to create an even bigger combo. And each turn you can pick five abilities no matter how big your party is. So you can have a maximum of five people on the field at once. And the max party size you can have is seven people. You can never have your full party on the field, but you can switch people out so that you always have someone on the field, or you, if someone is taking a lot of damage, you can take them out of the fight for a little while. Wildlings have a 50% base rate, I think. No, they have 70, so they're reduced to 50. And they have 2 LP, I believe, yes. So it takes a bit more to kill them. So we didn't get any multi-group or multi-monster encounters yet, so we didn't demonstrate random arrow shot. Random arrow shot's a ability that targets every enemy on the field, so it's really good for crowd control. As we'll see here. And if we didn't get random arrow shot, we would have reset it, but um, if there was no copper at all, we'd have to go with the knife. So we'd just have to stab these bees individually. It would be the most annoying thing I could ever do. But luckily, we got the bow, so everything's fine. And yeah, you just combo it as much as possible to increase the chance of doing LP damage. The bees have 1 LP, so they're not too hard to take out. Ideally, this fight lasts 1 round. I don't think I've ever seen it go more, but... First time for everything. That should be fine. Oh, well. It might have happened before. I'm not going to say that one phrase. I just have poor memory. And that's the end of part two of uh, Road to Vaftum. So market rank increase there. For the panels, at first I'm focusing on increasing Henri's skill. Marcusite's good. Good. Yeah, let's go. And depending on which uh, part of the panel board you use, uh, different stats will increase. The top uh, right and the rightmost, uh, for instance, scroll down too much. Got lost in my notes. <laughs> Where was I? Oh yeah, the top right and rightmost will increase your skill. So I'm placing panels there to increase the skill of Henri. Skills increase the damage you do with daggers and bows, so you can see why it's important for Henri. That's all he'll be this entire run. That's what's most important for most people. Uh, the exception being uh, the axe user that we'll get later on will want to increase his strength more so than his uh, skill. The so skill is also important for him. And pretty good luck with encounters. Okay. So I'm not sure what Henri was just afflicted with. Probably okay though. Uh, sure if he just got insta killed or something weird. I don't think that's possible. <laughs> to be clear. But there's some things you'd never know about this game. Okay, 
he's just paralyzed. That's not his hook. Paralysis will mark out some of the panels and also potentially eliminate some of your turns. It's uh, worse if it happens later on, but right now it's not the worst thing. Worst thing that could happen is actually getting blinded by a bird. Luckily, it's really hard again to encounter with birds unless they're accompanied by a different creature. And just have another body on the field. We'll cast Fire Arrow. Shouldn't even get to Laura's turn, but... That's more like it. <laughs> That's what's supposed to happen. Okay, see if there's anything in the shop here. Lead. Where's the lead? It's good. Not too expensive. So this is the final part of Road to Vaftum. We're on a ship for some reason. We also meet Michelle here. She's going to be our gun user for a portion of the run. We're not going to use her as our final, uh, or in our final party, but she's a good utility character while we have her. The reason why we don't use her is because her LP is really low, so she can die really easily. And to make her faster, we remove everything but the gun. Probably not worth it to use Aura here, because you're just going to run into Aquarms, which have a 120% aggro rate. Uh, but there's a small chance you'll just run into a bird solo. At that point, it would be worth it. And to handle group encounters, you just uh, queue up some random arrow shots. Use Dagger to start with so that you can select a turn before the enemies can, because Dagger resolves as the fastest move. Then you use the bow instead. Which causes it to very likely combo with the enemy, because the bow will be a lot slower than the dagger, so a lot of the enemy's attacks will resolve before the bow attack. And we'll get to demonstrate the bow here. Or the gun, rather, because it's really good at killing this type of undead. Unless you do that. We're gonna stab the undead. <laughs> and the reason the acre is in the second slot is because it has a deflect ability. And that's the first instance of trying to use the battle reel. Where each specific panel is only on screen for a tenth of a second. Which isn't so bad for timing. Um, but can be tricky just trying to do it super consistently. You're gonna stand there or put up a fight. There are a lot of encounters on this boat because it's haunted. Supposedly because Michelle is super unlucky, so wherever she goes, bad things will happen. So the boat we have to ride is now haunted by ghosts. You can tell if an enemy's coming up by the text uh, that appears when you select your direction. If it's yellow, that means there's an enemy there. If it's red, it means there's a bunch of enemies. If it's blue, it means there's no enemies. Yeah, single shot takes out the skeleton. 
we're actually going to use that highlight text feature coming up here because we can choose which direction to go based on where the enemies are. So here, there's an enemy up top, so we're going to go this way. Oh, we're just going to run into an enemy. Oh! I'm not sure why that didn't... We're going to accept what's happened. For some reason, the Aquan didn't attack. Like this one did. So the next force encounter is coming up. Like the other two, it's just a bunch of mobs with a pursuer. So same strategy applies. The only difference here is we're going to queue up one shot. That's because there's one bird that's likely to survive the random arrow shots. There's a bird, but I'm not sure if it only resolves for the bird. So that might be something I learned. If the bird's in front, it only resolves for the bird egg growing gun. This is not the disc, I had to order a new one. <laughs> that disc is still missing in action. MIA? There we go. I was gonna say M AMA, but I was like, that's not right. So I have now purchased two unlimited saga discs. We already have obstacle crossing. So here's the one cutscene in the game. Every scenario has this cutscene. Cannot skip it. It's a different cutscene, but it always happens in the same place for each scenario. It's the Iskandar Festival or something. Ah, it's neutral. <laughs> So the story with me initially running this game was that, kind of as a joke, either was planned to be on April 1st or it had to be delayed, but it was originally going to be an April 1st blind race where I was going to race HD the Elder the Great uh, and Judy scenario. But HD had speedrun that scenario, but I was just going in with uh, speedrun notes, never playing the game before. And I actually enjoyed the game. Um, until I got six hours into the race when I got to... If you remember last run, the part where you fight the birds, that's when I began to hate Unlimited Saga. I really enjoyed it up to that point, but those birds destroyed me. I did end up getting to the scenario boss and beating him and getting to chaos. But when the memorial fires were lit, I, I had no chance against chaos, obviously. And HD didn't finish either, so the race wasn't even recorded. We're no longer in this world. But yeah, I swore to never play Unlimited Saga ever again, but it was left in my PS3, because I don't really use much discs in my PS3. But for the first RPG Limit Break, I brought my PS3 to Utah, because I was going to run Wild Arms on it, the PSN version. And because I've never used a disc before, or since then, the Unlimited Saga was still in the PS3. And for some reason I want to remove it- oh yeah, because my PS3 died. But I wanted to see if maybe taking the disc out would help, so I removed Unlimited Saga from the PS3 and just put it on a desk, and it stayed there. <laughs> and I was like, well, I'm never going to play this game, so you can keep it. And here we are, over four years later, on this very same channel. Not the same marathon, but close enough. So yeah, that cutscene happened. And we go to the mausoleum of... Henri's family. For some reason, it's not in his kingdom. It's because the kings were bros, I guess. And he comes here because his kingdom was destroyed, I forgot to mention. So he's a prince of a lost kingdom. And all he has to remember his parents is this dagger. And it just so happens to fit in the slot in the family mausoleum. Which opens a secret passage. That's a secret passage. So. And you learn something here. I've never actually read this. It's only about the five elements and the blade and controlling powers. And Laura's like, you need to go back to your home. 
find out what this is all about. And when you leave the secret tomb, this dude shows up, not suspicious at all. He's a lord from the Fallen Kingdom, and he's here to take Henri back. So Laura's kind of left alone. No husband, no quest. So she's kind of bummed out about having no purpose. So she's just kind of hanging out in this bar. What should I do now? But then Henri comes back and says, you gotta come with me. I'm returning to Escada, his kingdom. I was relieved to see the and this Francis guy is suspicious of Laura. It looks like he has white pupils, but it's actually he's looking away from everybody. But I was worried about leaving Laura all alone. I guess, yeah, that's a good question. Is he a prince if he has no kingdom? It was a king without a castle. Scale is good. Get some equipment from this guy. I'll put the chainmail on. Anything else good here? We're looking for ironstone. And we found it! Everything's coming up millhouse. Uh, <laughs> copper. Uh, we can make a dagger out of that. Stone spear, quartz. Good. So good. We're gonna save here because we might lose an ability that we really need. Because we're going to do some more smithing here. So we get a 3 ability copper or stone spear from... I went to the wrong place. That's fine, because nothing happened. <laughs> so we got a copper sword with 3 abilities on it, and we're going to turn that into something else. Or it's a stone spear, actually. But combined with wood, it becomes copper. And if we make a bow out of that copper sword and something that weighs three, which fur does, we get this. It's a really good bow. There are many bows, but this one is mine. Uh, this one... Okay, that's really good. That's all we need for now. So which one has more durability? Actually, we also want to forge a staff here if we can. So, something with two abilities, something good. Now we're returning to Escada. Only Marcosite plus wood becomes Carper. It's not documented anywhere, but it's just true. <laughs> really weird. I should have done my formation before this, but it's fine. I was not expecting the insect to attack me. We're going to switch to stabbing once with Henri, then doing a bunch of martial arts skills with Francis here, and that's because we want to get a lot of punch and kick panels, and if you use martial arts, you'll be more likely to get those panels at the end of a quest. <laughs> I'm not here to debate whether Marcusite plus wood becomes copper, it's just, just a thing. Do some equipment stuff here. I'm gonna give her another one. I'm gonna give the metal bow to Francis, even though he's not gonna use it, just so he might be able to spark an ability off of it. And that's about all we need to do. Yeah, I just found it funny the way I phrased it. It seemed really combative. <laughs> I just meant to state the facts, you know? Oh, I forgot to equip the copper knife to Henri. Uh, the forging system is kind of simple, but tricky until you mess with it a little bit. Make that. Oh, I didn't make it. Oh, that explains why I didn't. We can just make that later. Oh, wait, we can't make it. We do that in one. Getting ahead of myself. 
So the forging takes a primary material, which will determine the material of the final weapon. And then the secondary material might affect the final outcome of the material, depending on what material combination you use. We'll be doing some more of that later on, where we'll try to create steel by forging ironstone and wood. That's a specific combination that yields either iron or steel. Uh, yeah, axe skills are going to be our bread and butter by the end of the game. Specifically for Francis. Okay, this You're gonna stand there or put up a fight. It's good because they all grouped up, so they're not going to all attack me. But on the other hand, the other two monsters have zero aggro rate, so they wouldn't attack me anyways. But we got a bow, so everything's fine. But yeah, most for the most part, forging is basically to yield abilities from a certain for a certain weapon. Like we want to draw out an ability, like random arrow shot, for instance, on a bow. When you forge it, you have a chance of either losing the ability on a item or gaining it. We want to be careful because we really don't want to lose important abilities, which is why I'm always saving before we do forging. Uh, but otherwise, forging is mostly just to create metal bows for endgame, preferably with quickshot. If we merge copper and lead, it creates a very heavy bow, which will get a very good ability called multi-shot in the second slot. And the other thing that's important for forging is that the secondary ability affects the final weight of the item, which affects the moveset it gets. Even though when you forge an item and it has an effective weight of zero when you equip it to a person, the weight that it's supposed to have is what determines its ability set, and lead is very heavy. So it creates a he very heavy weapon if you forge it with something else. Yeah, axes are low LP except for the ability reverse delta, which is actually the highest. No spoilers, we're gonna the whole lot uh, of reverse delta. Right there. Ah, uh, funny question. I've never played this game casually. So I'm gonna go with Axe. Axe and Bow seem good. So this dungeon can be either moderate length or very short, depending on if you get the ability overtake obstacle. Luckily we did get it, so as long as we're not scrubs at the field reel, uh, this won't take long. So we've got to get a green circle to pass an obstacle. I should say there's a drift in the field reel, so this isn't all me. It's mostly me, though. There we go. We did it. Yeah. Oh, and then an enemy came. <laughs> so yeah, the enemies move. Uh, okay, we ran out of use. We should have shot the guy. Wasn't thinking. Fine. Let's punch him to death. But he's a skeleton! So we'll get a new knife after the next adventure, so it's not a big deal that it broke. Don't happen to have any other knives. Never be sure. That'll do. But yeah, we just jump over the obstacle because we had obstacle remove. Otherwise, we'd have to do a whole dungeon. But we go to the library immediately and read some books.
And the books just talk about the elemental gears and the Blade of Escada. And how, if you have all of the pieces of the elemental gear and the Blade of Escada, you can lock a superpower or something like that. And we figure that Degobos, the fiend who destroyed the Kingdom of Escada, is probably after this. And we also figure that if we gather the pieces, then we'll be able to beat Degobos, or something like that. Forging does restore the durability, but we're not going to visit a forge uh, before the next quest. Some bumping music, by the way. So like any dumb protagonist, we're going to collect all the pieces the enemy needs to become super powerful. And guess what happens? Doesn't matter. We gotta be really careful here if we select the wrong quest. This is all over. I might save even though it's just pushing the cursor down. I don't know. I'm not gonna save. It'll be fine. It is my duty to know its secret. Very careful. Should I involve lore in this any further? Don't judge me for saving. It'd be very bad if I selected the wrong adventure. <laughs> it's very silly that I even have to worry about this, but here we are. I did it once, and that's why I have to do it. Okay, so that's simple. Hello, this is Armic again, even though we've never met you. So now we're going to do four quests. You can do them in any order. We're doing them in a specific order. Uh, to make it fast and efficient. That's a very great way to speedrun, or a commentator speedrun. <laughs> We're doing it because it's the best way to go. We're doing this one first because you get the ability Swimming Level 3, which lets you take a shortcut in the next quest, or two quests from now is when we'll actually take that shortcut. And we don't actually know how to do the dungeon without that shortcut, so that's why I was concerned about actually selecting that one. A dagger again. And the other thing you get from this quest is the Dragon Scale Knife, which you can sell for a Hella Gela. A uh, lot of G's, so we can fund the rest of our quest pretty easily. The gimmick with this quest is you carry around this orb and it will change colors depending on uh, what you do. Wait, I ran the wrong one. It's supposed to go west, not south. That'll throw off the timing slightly. Surprisingly, it's pretty easily to go the wrong direction. You hold the analog stick in a certain direction, and there's like a lot of different places you can hold it to go. It might just be eight way, and I'm just a scrub. Probably just eight way. Let's go west here. And this monster shakes you down. If you select the second option, he'll never attack you. This kind of gives you the eye. So the blue orb vibrates to indicate that the slot that you have to put it in is near. And we just gotta put the orb in three different slots when it's a different color. Blue, green, then red. Oh uh, yeah, if the party isn't on the... or doesn't have an action to do in the turn, they leave the field. You can control who will potentially get hit in combat by selecting who you want in. So you very rarely see a few people. You always see three people in the final fight. That's its final phase and things have gone all the way south. So this is the first slot with the orb in. Go where we were going last time. I already cleared out the undead here, so... So 
some reason it took longer. Oh, we didn't take the four actions. We knew we'd go in the wrong direction. So after a certain round of actions, the orb will change from blue to green. And in a certain amount of actions, it will change from green to red. That's when we arrive at the final slot. Again, whenever you pass that mob, you just gotta kind of... It's like the second option, it'll never attack you. There's no other area where that happens. I'm not really sure what is going on with that mob in this specific... And I'm alternating between punch and kick with Francis, and that's because if you use multiple different types of abilities, you'll be more likely to get good panels than if you just stick to a single one. So I'll always queue up two punches and two kicks, or vice versa, depending on where the cursor currently is. And we're getting shaked down. Shook down, rather. And here is the final slot. And we time it so that the color doesn't change until you get to the slot, so you don't get that vibration animation we got with the blue orb. Just saves a place amount of time, but time save nonetheless. And the puzzle is solved. And mysterious cave open. Yeah, I like the look and the sound. I like everything about this game. I probably won't like it if I try to play it casually, but that might be correct to say. Maybe I would enjoy it. Slimes has no aggro rate, so just walk by him. Who knows how I'd consider this game if I were to play it casually. The world may never know. Everyone's really harsh on this game, for good reason. It's pretty obtuse. And even in uh, Japan, they use the phrase that Kuso Grande was inspired by to describe this game. But as a speedrun game, it's very interesting because there's a lot of randomness to it, but there's a method to the randomness. That there is a pretty legit skill ceiling. One that I've not nearly reached. We're going to open this chest, even though it's going to cause that to happen. We just want the items, man. We could have tried to get the beast to move, but... Nothing wrong with getting some more panel history. Panel history being the panels you use during the quest, which determines the panels you get at the end of the quest. But yeah, in Japan this is appreciated very much as a speed game, and not so much here, but of the people that have learned it for a speed game, it's uh, pretty great, unironically. So this is the Dragon Scale Knife that we're going to sell. And we also open these three chests. What you get is random, but there's a chance you'll get something good. Uh, I just set that trap off myself. You might notice those traps, they don't actually matter at all. So don't worry about them. Oh, we don't need that anymore. Bro. Slightly better, but we're Get that bonus. Put it there. Just for a temporary boost in stats there. Oh, for... Okay, I was like, wait, what did I say? <laughs> I'm pretty good about that stuff. But I think I see what you're getting at. <laughs> I call no. Uh, so we're gonna forge some... Wait, we didn't check the items yet. Let's 
sell the knife. Check out what the items are here. Mark site's always good. Sword. A little too pricey. Stone dagger, serpentine dagger. Working now. <laughs> I'm really good at uh, watching the old language there. We'll see once we get to chaos. No, I, s I swear, ironically enough. <laughs> I never swear. Try to make some bows here. Can we make some bows? Or do we have more market site? Hey, that's a really good bow. Have any more market site? Wait, we have one more Marcus site. Do we have any more wood? Serpentine's too heavy. Bone, I believe, is fine. But yeah, it was better. So we're trying to get the bows for the end game because we need five bow users, six bow users. Wood. So this is the second of four elemental gear quests. This one's pretty straightforward. You just go into the forest maze and then use up actions, and eventually the elemental gear will come to you for some reason. We're gonna switch this out for. Actually, no reason to switch that out. We just gotta go through this path. Mostly inoffensive creatures here, they won't attack you as long as you have aura on, most likely. And we'll reach this road sign that tells you the forest mages prince. Mages? Mazes. That's when we'll just waste a bunch of turns and that get the elemental gear. Wanna use aura just so that there's less likely chance of getting an encounter, and then just waste turns. And we solved the riddle. So this fight isn't too bad, it'll probably take two turns. This is the first actual boss of the run. He has 6 LP, and 4 actions per turn. And to combo, we don't want the enemy to interrupt our actions, so we're going to use a very slow spell, and then queue up a bunch of attacks. Uh, and using a really slow spell means the enemy is more likely to go a bunch of times before our next turn. So if we can use up all four actions of this guy, we can do a four-person combo with all the bows. Unfortunately, we didn't go through all of them. Takes what we get. And for some reason, we're. Oh, he held a bunch of attacks. We were able to get a second arrow shot in with uh, the spell cast. Doesn't usually happen. But we've done two out of six LP damage so far. It's two more. I'm not really getting good combos, but we should be able to still kill him this turn. Just one more LP damage. And he's done. He's donezo! 
Okay, we got one ability on a bow that needed an ability, so that's... So, nothing great here in terms of pen. That way. Uh, we're getting a lot of keys. So, two more elemental gear quests to go. We're gonna do something here. We're gonna check Vaftum, see if there's any lead. We'd really like to buy some lead, if at all possible. So we can make more good bows. Fast, there's no lead. There's some wood, though. We're also looking for two ability equipment so that we can forge some uh, swords later on. Because we need uh, five swords, not four, but five, as the secondary equipment for our party. Because it gives them the deflect ability, which reduces the chances of getting hit, which is very important for the final boss. Even if it's all for naught. You're using a bow. Now I think about it, I'm gonna swap the bow. Uh, we'll do that before the boss, actually. Hold that thought. Or maybe I won't do it. Okay, I was hoping that fight wouldn't happen, but alas it did. So this isn't a big deal. The group encounters aren't as big of a deal as you might initially think just because we do have random arrow shots, so get rid of them all in one turn most likely. There's a bunch with a bunch of LP, it's less good. But usually one air random arrow shot's enough to take everyone out. And the gimmick of this dungeon is that you find a bunch of murals on the wall, and if you fight them, it opens up holes. You navigate the dungeon by fighting monsters and going through caverns. And just like any good cave, there's a ridiculous amount of mobs on the map. So we'll be getting a bunch of encounters in this dungeon. One of the few times you actually fight a beast, alone anyways, because they'll never actually aggro on you. And the hole opens... draw through. Or it's a crevice! Excuse me. Mm, this is technically a new area, I guess, but it's the same area, so our uh, aura carries over so we don't need to recast it. Not that it's helping us much. They have a 50% with Aura, so it's kind of annoying that I'm getting so many Wildling encounters. Not doing the random arrow shot stuff properly. But 
The good thing is that they're all group encounters, so it's getting rid of a lot of mobs on the map. So, you know, silver lining in all things. You need hopeless optimism if uh, you're going to run a mode of saga. And like I was saying, traps don't actually matter because they only occur in dungeons where you're not in a huge danger of dying to the bosses. So even if you do take a bunch of HP and OP damage, it's no biggie. The one bad thing that can happen is Henri getting killed. It just slows him down. It's not a deal breaker or anything. find another mural. Firebird. This is like the sub-boss of this area, it's not the final one. This mob has 4 LP and 3 actions and we're gonna use the same strategy. We never heal, no. Healing is slow. Flash, I'm not sure if we can. <laughs> we're gonna use boulder instead of the fire move because this guy absorbs fire. Just like that little bit of extra damage. We get to see uh, Anzan for the first time. He's the heaviest character in the game. Which means he's really good at rescuing people, but also pretty much impossible to rescue himself if he falls in combat. Luckily, he has a lot of LP. I forgot I shot at the end of that. So, still a good combo. Maybe still kill, but that shot there was basically worthless. Nope, no kill. That's fine, though. Go shoot a bunch of times, Drat. Maybe it was too early with this Drat. It's too early with this Drat. <laughs> We're doing damage at least. I forgot we did a, no damage basically with that previous combo. Okay, we did one there. Maybe the uh, stabby stabby will get this through. Nice! Planned all along. We even got some wood for it. Uh, no incentive fighting counters. No. Speed running. That's not. This fight's kind of annoying. It has two LP and it's kind of a tank. I'm very good at dealing. It's also a flying fish. I guess we've seen a few of those at this point. Not the weirdest thing we've seen in this run. Voice clip is the worst in the entire game. I must find stronger enemies. And out of all the quests, this one is the most likely for LP or Henri to LP die. Because there's a lot of mobs that you're constantly fighting and two bosses. So there's a chance we'll see Henri fall. That's no big deal. Oh, went the wrong way. 
<laughs> Thank you, Delphi. I'll do my best to do the thing. Nice to flat. Hopefully we see a bunch of those in the final encounter. And good luck with the mobs, we're killing them pretty quickly. We're gonna take a slight shortcut here. Assuming we don't run into any more mobs on the way. Or the reason why we do the water elemental uh, quest first is so that we can get swimming. We can cross this little river here. Get the lag mighted. Uh, ideally, there are things that don't fight you, but that's not how it's going today. The wildlings only have a 50% chance of attacking you. So, 100% apparently. Uh, we use Henri partially because he's the first character you get, so you just kind of put him in the first slot at that point. And you're building up skill with him from the start. The skill affects the amount of damage you would do with daggers. And daggers are the quickest weapon in the game for most fights, so we can always go the four enemies with Henri. I did the wrong thing. I looked at the skeleton instead of the hole. I just really wanted to fight this encounter. Let's look at skeleton. There's a lot of things going on in that one panel. Hopefully nothing bad happens with looking at the skeleton. Alright, we got something. I've never actually looked at a skeleton before. <laughs> as strange as that is to say it loud. By Aura again. This is just a straight path. So we'll always run into all the enemies that spawn here. Unfortunately, We'll most likely have to fight them anyway. We're near the end of this quest. Daggers and bows, as far as I know, are pretty legit. But the best thing you can use is reverse delta, though. Thank you, everyone. And that one panel of the gun is really good, doing LP damage as well. Yeah, encounter central in this cave. Not much you can do.
Uh, yeah, certain monster types have resistances to certain damage types. There's slashing, piercing, and hit. And probably other types. There's elemental types as well. I think shooting is grouped up with Pierce in this game. Have we won already? I'm pretty sure. And Moose can have multiple hit types. And it will select the one that the opponent is most weak to, given uh, the option. So if our opponent is Resistant to slashing, and your move is slashing Pierce, it will do Pierce. Uh, Henry is pretty low. This is probably the final fight. We'll risk it for the biscuit. Alright, no LP damage. Has a bow. Not that she had a bow. So this is the final encounter of the dungeon. He's the actual boss. He has four LP and four actions, and we're gonna do the same old strat. Use a spell to reduce all of his attacks. Give him the old Bow and arrow. That's one action. Two. Three. And four. So we get uh, the complete combo here. And we also spark some abilities. This guy's going down. Cough, cough. You're supposed to go down. Uh, <laughs> guess let's do the same thing. I hate when the game doesn't do the thing I predict. This is probably most definitely overkill, but this guy's going down. Good enter one. Punch. Good for up there. Or what you doesn't help. Do another potential shopping trip. We want wood. Oh, helm. Okay. We'll go to Baftum again. 
We're going to bathtub way too often, but we want to see some lead. We gotta get the lead out. I'm not sure what that phrase actually means, but probably nothing horrible. <laughs> and let's not dwell on it. Thing that. So, uh, and the final elemental gear pick Nick out of the party. Okay. Yeah, it's fine then. That's not because a radio station used that phrase to say yeah, that they're gonna play a bunch of Led Zeppelin. <laughs> so we no longer have our gun user. We're gonna have to use the traditional methods of stabbing skeletons. And also giving a good old multi shot for good measure. Oh, I see. Weird phrase. And in this dungeon, you have to find two Bamor to get through a collapsed tunnel. That's what that note says, but you don't have to read it. Because you already know what to do. The enemies aren't super aggressive for the most part in this dungeon, so it's not as bad as the previous cave we were in. You can still run to some awful undead, but less likely to occur. We're about to get the first bomb ore, and you get it by talking to the statue until it gives it to you. Completely random, could take forever. Did it happen first try? I'm open for closer to- alright, second try, that's pretty good. Didn't even have enough time to complain about it. Ore is always in the same spot. At least two of the ore are always located in the same place. I'm not sure if there's more. Unlike I said. Oh, right. Went the wrong way. There's a bunch of stuff in this dungeon that I have no idea what it's about because I just take the critical path, as any good speedrunner does. Well, this dungeon is probably interesting to explore it. <laughs> but it's pretty short if you don't, which is preferred overall. This ore is kind of weird to get. You gotta talk to this thing and kind of disturb its slumber and then back off. And this time we're gonna wake it up for real, and that way the bomb ore will drop. And that's Unlimited Saga in a nutshell. I did not play this casually. Most of you could say is that I did a blind run with speedrun notes. Which I recommend never ever doing that in your life. Because the only thing you'll end up with is despair. We've got the two bomb ores so we can clear the tunnel. Then we kinda hope we don't run into anything savage in this tunnel for the boss. And we did it. And the boss is a pushover. 
Four actions, four LP, really low health. So, same old strat, but this fight should only last one turn. Yeah, all the paths are predetermined. It's like the one thing not random about this game. So that's all of his moves, so we can get the four combo. So yeah. Overkill, even. Didn't have to go down like that. IPO. Uh, no boost. Uh, nothing else. That's you might be thinking just now, he just overrode Aura. What is he doing? He's a madman. But uh, Mosso Yanni comes with Aura. We don't have to worry about it being on uh, Laura anymore. with the crocodile. So good. Good. Now oh, you want to forge. Five swords. So, do we have any swords that have reflect? We have one. Okay, we only have one. Five. So we have all the swords we'll need for the end game. Now we'll visit our good friend Galios. We're gonna leave all of the equipment with Galios that we had retrieved because we're about to go fight Dagobos, who destroyed the kingdom, if you remember. And we don't want to endanger the equipment that we spent all the time trying to find. The important thing is here, we want Mick to be in the party. So she's going to be crucial to beat Dago Boat. I wonder, can I defeat Dago Boss? Can I avenge my mother and father's death? We're gonna sort our items real quick. We're supposed to do this a bit earlier, but it's... And now I'll have to fight Diggle Bose. This is his castle.
No, that's Saga in a nutshell. Well, maybe not needlessly. That's Your mileage may vary on that one. They're definitely complicated. Or hard to understand. And this might be the hardest of them all. That's probably not true. It's not too bad. You just gotta get over the fact that everything is not like any other RPG in many ways. If you discard everything you know about video games and then read up a bunch on this game, it's not so bad. Freaking undeads. Yeah, that is clearly not an uppercut. <laughs> I agree with that sentiment. Throwing a multi. What are we doing for endurance? Should be okay. So we're going to swap out a metal bow here. Just to conserve. Uh, how much... 18. No, that's not a good idea at all. Which 45, that's better. It's not a beehive, it's a boulder. Big difference. That's actually a good thing that happened. But wildlings will always be wild. Insect elite. And here's the scenario boss of this story. The man himself, Daigle Bose. He challenges you to a duel. You can only deploy one person at a time in this fight. So naturally, we're sending out our pinch hitter, our number one, with a bullet. We're sending out Michelle.
And hopefully this lasts one round. But it didn't. Oh, we still have hope. Maybe, maybe. Nice. Alright. So that fight you want to lose, it determines who the actual final boss is, and it's also a lot faster to die. The Dagobos version of Chaos is a lot easier than the Galios version of Chaos. But he lets you leave. So he's not that bad. Definitely don't want that. Punch. Over here, then. Let's get centered. Here. Out for the skill bonus. I'm gonna save here because if we do the wrong thing, it's all over. We did that once to kill a run, where we went to Galliosos Castle immediately accidentally. The last one check in Vaftum, see if there's any lead. Now to Wanda, where we're actually going to be doing some forging. But first, we're going to check, see if we can buy anything. Or not. Uh, now we're going to equip some stuff just to get out of our inventory. Here's half yeah, he still has it equipped. So uh, multi shot, multi shot. Shot. We're going to save here because we're going to try to force the black axe here. This might take a few attempts. So first we got to forge um, iron stone with wood to get iron. We are hoping to get steel there, but... 38, is that the one we want? Yes, that is good. Now we just gotta hope this doesn't lose the ability. No! <laughs> it's fine.
<sighs> okay. Okay, we got it. Everything's fine. <laughs> Too many swords. Do what that swords do. Okay, that's good enough. So we need a time lapse on the black axe because that's how you get reverse delta, which is the powerful move that you need for end game. Otherwise, everyone's fine. All right. Now it's off to Galios' castle for reals. And surprisingly, Galios reveals himself to be a traitor. And he, like, sold you all out to Dagobos or something. And this dude was a servant of Dagobos, but he swears he had no idea what was happening. So he comes with the fight is master. So this first fight is just a bunch of Minotons. They each have three LP, and there's four of them, so we're just gonna spam random arrow shot to take them out. Deflection though. This will always take a couple turns unless you're really lucky. gonna throw in uh, Francis in case we end up with a single enemy left we can try to get a reverse delta off of it. Okay, we got multi-shot on another bow, that's really good. So this fight is very important. It has a high spark rate, which means that when you use moves, you have a good chance of learning a higher level version of that move while you're using it. We're going to use this fight to learn Reverse Delta as well as Drag Down, which is a staff move. And ideally, we learn it immediately. But that's not what happened, we learned something. But learning it now means we won't accidentally learn it later, so it's not a bad thing. Good deflection. Don't like the amount of LP damage that fight is taking now. Come on! <laughs> Still okay.
Right down, right down, dang. So Cruncher is another ability that good that we sparked it just so that we don't accidentally spark it later, but could use a drag down right about now. That reverse delta, no, it's backlash. So backslash you want to learn just so that you don't accidentally use it later. Like every other ability. So all that's left for these two is to spark perspective desired ability. How are you doing? Okay, we got reverse delta. So we're gonna do something unorthodox here. No spark of the drag down. Oh, no! Plant lady is dead. Long live plant lady. Yeah, at least sparked an ability off of What's wrong with getting rid of useless royalty? Those with power rule the world. So you're going to be seeing a lot of reverse delta stuff. This is the final boss of this sequence. He has 15 LP. And it's hard to <laughs> commentate while trying to hit those reverse deltas, but get the old college try. Serious time. Oh crap, she's on the field. I now notice that Clint Lee was a part of the main party. So we'll have to get her corpse out of there. <laughs>
and Mussolini is pretty heavy, so it's difficult to rescue him. Yeah, good luck. Here he is. We gotta get better at reverse deltas before we get to the main event. Alright, Galios is down at least. Galios, your plans are old news to me. Trying to use me to get your hands on the blade. That sounds like Beerus. And Degobo shows up, kills Galios, runs away with all the gear. I would like to hit the red more often, but the red panel is always in the same place, and each panel is on screen or selectable for a tenth of a second, so you just gotta be good. <laughs> Okay. Final adventure. So, at the end of each scenario, you'll inevitably end up at one of the seven wonders of the world. The ones you go to as Laura are the Nako lines. And apparently they are associated with the elemental gears where if you take all of the equipment to the knackle lines to the center of it, you will obtain the ultimate power. And the way this dungeon works is that there's five mini dungeons and you gotta go to every space in the mini dungeon to complete the line and then you can progress to the dungeon. And if you complete all five lines, it removes the barrier to the center. And the first line is the whirl line. The gimmick for it is that you go the opposite direction of the one you choose. Just like a whirlpool, I guess, if you're swimming against the waves. 
And this uh, mini dungeon slash lion only has Aquan enemies, which you'll always fight. So there's no point in casting Aura. Actually, it's... These uh, shark things are a little tough, so give them a good reverse delta to take them out quickly. Okay, you just gotta navigate every single space in the line, and then we'll be done. And there won't be much time to talk about the chaos fight when we get there, so I'll just describe it now. Well, time. There will be plenty of time to talk about, but I will be too focused to be able to say anything uh, comprehensive. So the Chaos Fight is divided into four phases. The first phase has 20,000 health and 26 LP. It's the longest phase that will last for hopefully six to seven turns. And in phase one, he can do three actions per turn, and the actions are dependent on whether his wings are closed or not. And every few turns, he'll either close or open his wings. I believe is how it works. But once you do 26 LP damage, he'll go to phase 2. And if you've done over 10k health of damage, he'll uh, go back to 10k health. Otherwise, he'll have the health that he previously had. And second form has 16 LP. But because... He doesn't heal up completely for that phase, it's not that hard to do LP damage right off the gate. So ideally that round will only last two phases, or two turns. And the third phase, once you do 16 LP damage to the second phase, is the same gimmick. If you've done over 10k damage, you'll revert to 10k. Oops, went the wrong way. Oops, all berries. <laughs> it's the whirlpool effect. Um, yeah, the third phase has 11 LP and has 5 actions per turn, whereas the first one has 3 and the second form has 4. And once you do 11 LP damage to that form, you will advance to the fourth form of Chaos, which goes back to the full 20k HP and also has 20 LP. So you have to do a bunch of HP damage before you can start doing damage to its LP. And also, that phase has 7 attacks per turn, so it's an extremely deadly phase, and it will be when a lot of our characters just start dying in large quantities. Francis will try to live as long as possible to do as much HP and LP damage before we enter the Desperation phase. And the Desperation phase is when Francis is dead and we just have to do as much LP damage as possible before all of our characters die. Oh, we went the wrong way. Not a big deal that we went the wrong way. I keep reading NW as NE. So we went to the insect line here. Or the butterfly line, but it's populated by insects. So you kind of have to deal with them because they have a really high egg row rate. 70% with aura on. Luckily, insects aren't too hard to kill. So yeah, you just go through, complete the butterfly, and then you'll be done with this line. But yeah, the fourth phase is... Most likely, if I do wipe, I'll be wiping on the fourth phase. It's not that difficult to get there, but once you're there, it's a living nightmare. You want to get there as quickly as possible so that you've taken as little LP damage as you can.
fight all the insects. So the butterfly line is now complete. Three more to go. Now, if nothing else, Saga has a lot of variety. So this is a sword line populated by uh, wildlings. They're pretty aggressive, so we'll likely get some encounters here. And just like its name implies, this line is shaped like a sword. The mechanic here is that you have to hit a bunch of buttons to unlock different parts of the sword to complete it. Just gotta wander around and hit some buttons. So this unlocks one of the sides of the blade and traverse it. Otherwise there would be an invisible wall there. This unlocks the other side of the hilt. If it's going to end in 30 minutes. Great question. <laughs> because it will end in 30 minutes. Overall, we have a decent setup. The only thing that's bad is that we haven't sparked a drag down yet. Uh, now this is the final quest. And this unlocks the other side of the uh, blade, but it locks the blade you previously traveled, so you gotta go a roundabout way. As I forgot and ran into an invisible wall. This final button will completely lock everything. And also despawns all the mobs. Pretty sure. Well, you're not too late to see it potentially demolish someone. So this is the bird line, the name suggests it's populated by birds, so it's not too bad in terms of aggro rate. We'll most likely get through here without a major incident. And the buttons unlock different parts of the birds, like the sword.
I forgot what I was doing for a second. The button's over here. I'm gonna reapply Aura because it just wore off. So the bird is mostly complete except the head. We'll get there soon. And the bird is complete. There's only one more line left. That is the giant line. Which means it has undead in it, because when I think giants, I think undead. There's no point in using it for action. And you can choose to manipulate the undead to try to avoid it, but it takes some time and it's not guaranteed, so I'm gonna take it on the chin here. The gimmick for this area is that there's invisible walls. You get a hint there with the question mark that there's an invisible wall, as well as, as, well as that mysterious circle there. And all you gotta do is hold the direction, then you can go through the wall. Button unlocks the topmost door. to kill him now. Visible non-wall, exactly. Have we won already? just a bit more left in this line, then all the lines will be complete and we can progress to the final battles. And the first final battle is the scenario boss. It's Dagobos. It's our rematch. He doesn't have a lot of health, but he has a lot of LP, so we'll start doing LP damage to him immediately. It'll still take a while to kill him. 
But once uh, things get going, I'm gonna focus real hard. <laughs> so I'll talk when I can, but it's gonna be, uh, you know, enjoy the show, I guess. Be something like that. World record is 153 as far as I know. There might be a faster time. There's a run on YouTube. All the lines are complete, so the barrier has been lifted. Sure, everyone's got the right stuff. Hedra Force lets you level up one more time. Also save. This is good. Oh. I'm there. All right, here we go. So we're going to have to try to learn drag down off this fight. Try as you might, the result will be the same. But try as I might, the result will be the same. Don't think this will be like last time. Yes. Okay. We have everything we need. Just gotta be good. So one more turn, probably kill him.
Okay, we're going into chaos now. And I'd like to commentate more, but <laughs> I gotta really focus on this because the reverse deltas are really hard to hit. So first phase again, 20,000 health, 26 or 22 LP rather. I was overestimating this guy. First phase, Lore's gonna cast uh, Power Surge on Francis to increase his attack and play to full. We'll use Drag Down to reduce the form's attack. And then we'll go from there. The spam reverse delta for days. We use the bow users because Chaos is far away, so the battle's a bit different from most where you usually want to use a dagger. So we'll always have two bow users on the field to make sure Francis is in the second row so he's less likely to get targeted. And that's the basic strat for the first three forms. We'll get through the desperation round when we get there.
Okay, phase two. He has 16 LP and doesn't regenerate all of his health. Okay, third phase, 11 LP, doesn't regain all of his HP, so we can do more LP damage. to do that, but sure. Okay, um, there are many things you can do. Oh, die. Okay, this is in anticipation of the next phase starting this round. We're gonna bring out the final team for phase four. So this is phase four. Regains all of its HP back to 20k. It has 20 LP. And in terms of the situation we're in right now, as long as I don't completely blow it, <laughs> this is extremely ideal.
But we really need to get that drag down off. Three or four. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's oh, oh, I don't know. Uh. Ooh, okay. Is this really the move I should be making? Cha, cha 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 Okay. What's the best move? Probably. To...
my boy. No! Desperation mode now. Henri! Ah, we're screwed. There's no. It's over. Rest in peace. <laughs> So, uh, I don't know <laughs> if we can go through that again. I don't know. We might have to. <laughs> So what does the audience want? Are we good with uh, calling it here or one more go? I don't know if I'll be able to <laughs> summon the willpower to do that again. <laughs> Alright, if we spark drag down during this fight. Don't think this'll be like last time. <laughs> Finish the fight. One more time. I'll do it one more time. Okay. I should mention that if I go over estimate that I committed to doing an all characters run before RPG limit break this year or next year, I guess.
hate to see something like that. Oh, it's going so well, too. I want to check the tape, see how close it was. Things kind of fell apart at the end. My tanks were dying really quickly. So freaking close! <laughs> I could taste it. I had such good conditions going into the final form too. I guess we're not powering down the final boss. Now I'm just mad. <laughs> Game. <laughs> it's all my fault. I was thinking it was possible. <laughs> well, this this day I went pretty well. There hasn't been any overestimates, no mercy kills. So. Not a saga marathon on me, unless this happens. We'll go in style. We would have been underestimate too. <laughs> We're so close. We didn't have to do the off characters. It didn't have to happen this way. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna have to get serious though pretty soon. Guy's almost toast. At least all the pressure is off. Alright. We're going back into chaos. I'm gonna have to go into serious mode, so can't look at chat, but... Time to get serious, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I put the eye in serious. Well, first. Second? I. <sighs> All right, one last try. No matter which chaos falls, this ends tonight. Here we go. We don't have drag downs, so we won't be able to reduce chaos's strength, but there's no Nothing after the butt. It's just bad news. There's no silver lining to that fact. And it's not worth trying to spark it because you're just wasting the control point. Actually, here we go. Controlled by something like you? You gotta be kidding me! Father, 
Muzzy. They were all killed to gain this power? Still going in on Henri. I'm going to hit you with everything I've got. Okay, first phase down, on to the second.
damage. I'm still decent. Stop doing that. Mm -hmm. Okay, phase three, weapon LP. Not as okay as it could be. <laughs> No, don't attack on Francis. He's done nothing wrong to you. Better than... <sighs> Rip, Musol. Hardly need me. Okay, going into final phase. Not great. <laughs> but, uh, we're not dead yet. So this guy has 20 LP, 20k health. Gotta do as much damage as possible with Francis before going to desperation. Out of there. Get him out of there!
How's Boulder doing? Still okay. Surprisingly. Don't die, Boulder. I can't have your corpse on the battlefield. You're okay, you're not okay. You're not gonna survive regardless, so. Try to get some action in there. Well, that's unfortunate. <laughs> Who's the heaviest one? I think she can last a turn. I don't know. Uh. You, Henri. Actually, it's up to you. Get him out of there. Nope. Overkill consumes five actions of chaos, so it's not the worst thing to see from your single target. <laughs> All right, it's our boy Henri's time. All right, got her out of there anyway. Nice block. MLG block. So. Get him out of there. Okay. do an or unorthodox move here. I'm gonna send in Laura before Anzon. This might get us one extra turn. Okay. It's about time I 
get to blow off some steam. Okay, that's fine. That consumed it all. It was nice, nice. MOG block. <laughs> Not so much second time, but... Oh, it did count as the second time. Nice. Laura's MVP. <laughs> Alright. Lanzan's gonna attempt to rescue. This could blow up in my face if this rescue fails. Okay. It worked. Now, if Anzan can somehow survive... <laughs> I wasn't expecting it. If Flora can make it through this turn, maybe... I've not been keeping track of how much damage we've done. Not looking good though. No blocks. Blocks, blocks. MOG blocks. Uh, I think this is over. Okay. Good attempt. <laughs> but alas. Limited saga. <laughs> it was really close, I think. We'll have to check the tape. That was a rough one, you know. So, Unlimited Saga confirmed impossible. <laughs> Until next year. I think we just weren't ready this year. Me and Falcon, though, will return next year. Uh, and in the meantime, you can look forward to my all characters run. And <laughs> don't feel sorry for me. I'm the one that submitted the game. But we got to see most of the game anyways. The only difference is that, you know, if we did like 2 OP more damage or something. Keep streaming, I can't. Ah, what time is it? We can't put people through that. present most of the game. That's the way I look at it. How long can we keep going with it? <laughs> so I think, yeah, we'll end it there. So yeah, that's it for Unlimited Saga. That's it for Sagathon. Bic will do the official farewell, I believe. Um, look forward to next year when we beat Unlimited Saga. This is like the bad end, but we'll we'll get them next time. <laughs> and it wouldn't be a Saga marathon without a good old Mercy kill. But uh, you'll definitely see more Unlimited Saga from me. And basically the only thing you're missing is that you'd see a bunch of images. It's basically the same thing. And the timer would have stopped. But uh, that's it for me, and I'll pass it off. So until next time. <laughs> <laughs>